Good evening, children. This is my fifth video on the chapter The Circulatory System. In the previous video, I discussed blood transfusion and determination of the blood groups on the basis of antigen present on the surface of RBC. Then I explained the ABO system, the compatibility tab table of blood groups, the RH system, right? and then the importance of RH system in pregnancy. Today's topic to begin is blood vessels. So what are blood vessels? Blood vessels are branched tubes extending from the heart to all parts of the body. They are of three types. Number one, artery, two, vein, and three, capillary. So I like to make some clear key note to remember for always remember a for artery and a for away right that is arteries are those type of blood vessels which carries the blood away from the heart towards any organ all right once again a for artery and a for away that is arteries they carry blood you can see this this is the lumen of an artery so they are carrying the blood away from the heart towards any organ they have thick muscular walls you can see the wall it's very very thick a very narrow lumen that is a center through which the blood flows in jerks or spurts and this corresponds to the contractions that is ventricular contractions of the heart the next video we'll talk about heart right so just now you understand only this that the blood flows in jerks right the other are the other blood vessel is a vein so remember v for veins and v for walls right so veins they have presence of walls in them the same which is absent in artery right so look at the vein here the lumen of the vein is much wider as compared to the artery and the journey of blood is just the opposite so if artery was carrying the blood away from the heart then vein is the blood vessel which is carrying the blood away from an organ and bringing it towards the heart. Then the second difference is the walls here in the artery, they were very thick and muscular. But in the vein, the walls are thin muscular walls and the lumen is comparatively very wide as compared to the artery. Right? Then here, the walls are thin wider lumen i explain and blood flow is very uniform it is not in any kind of jerks or spurts as seen in the artery all right so remember these two are the uh, more more important ones for discussion here we'll have a big table to discuss structural and other differences right so here i am giving you a key note a for artery carrying blood away from the heart and v for uh, veins and v for walls because walls are present in vein to prevent the backflow of blood. But the same is absent in arteries. I like to show you the walls. This is the diagram at page number 98. Walls in a vein regulate the flow of blood in the direction of the heart. So if in a diagram like this is given in council exam, it's a very frequent diagram and they ask you identify the vessel. So the only possibility of this vessel is a vein because a wall is present which is not present in the artery or capillary right so coming to the third type of the vessel is a capillary now this is a very very narrow tube about 8 micrometers in diameter the wall consists of a single layer you can see this how the wall consists of a single layer of squamous epithelial cells the same uh, is a type of endothelium Right? And here there are no muscles and the total number of blood capillaries present in the whole body cannot be imagined. It's so high the number. Right? Then uh, once again before we come to the other topic I have started with the topic blood vessels and we are talking about number one what is the definition of a blood vessel then second what are the three types and how primarily they are different from each other. Before I come to the main differences and the tables, let us study some more things about the uh, capillaries, right? First, let me tell you about the functions of capillaries here. 
as i told you these are the uh, most smallest with the lumen uh, with the diameter they are only single layer of squamous epithelium then when they are so thin walled what function can they be effective in the first is a very important function for outward diffusion of oxygen into intercellular fluid and from there into the tissue cells the second is inward diffusion of carbon dioxide right from the intercellular fluid third to allow inward and outward diffusion of substances like glucose amino acids urea hormones etc and finally they allow the wbcs or the leukocytes to squeeze through capillary walls by amyloid movement called diapedesis i'll just remind you the diagram diapedesis when i taught you in the previous videos this diagram the wbc squeezing out was through the capillary wall why because it is single layer and it is easy for the wbc to squeeze out so that is like one of the functions of the wbcs in this category then coming to uh, some few more points now here another term to discuss is an arteriole so what is an arteriole it is the smallest final branch of an artery right Ar arterioles these are highly muscular can change diameter manifold an arteriole breaks up into capillaries so you can see in this diagram here how an arteriole is breaking up into capillaries remember children the blue color depicts the deoxygenated blood or in other words impure blood whereas the red blood depicts the oxygenated or the purer blood right so here you can see how the arteriole is breaking up into capillaries all right then what is if arteriole is the final branch of artery then what is a venule it is the smallest un united common branch see here when arteriole is breaking up into the uh, capillary then the united branch which is further continuing to form the larger vein this small structure the blue ones these are venules venules are larger in diameter than the arterioles right with much weaker muscle coat then here let's also talk about the imaginary number that if all blood vessels if all blood capillaries that means the smallest ones with the diameter if all the blood capillaries of the body were placed end to end in a row they could extend to a length of 100000 kilometers it's a very very high number to imagine right so this is a very rough diagram we haven't started heart yet so i am not labeling anything all i am just trying to show that in the heart the impure or deoxygenated blood is brought by the veins which are carrying it away from the organs but towards the heart right then lungs uh, then the heart sends this blood to the lungs which purifies them brings it back in the journey and now finally the blood in the pure form comes out from the artery that is why we say artery carries blood away from the heart but there is one exception in this all veins they carry deoxygenated or impure blood except pulmonary artery which carries the pure blood or oxygenated blood right similarly all arteries they carry oxygenated or pure blood except pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated or impure blood right so here our only topic for today children is the blood vessels we are talking about the three types of blood vessels it's an important topic we have to do the labeling also sometimes these diagrams are asked in the council examination you are asked to label the outermost labeling is external layer of connective tissue then we have the middle layer of smooth and smooth muscles and elastic fibers then the innermost is the endothelium that means the innermost this red colored is the endothelium and the lumen in the center what is of importance here is the thickness of the wall if you are asked to draw then you will be drawing accordingly and make sure that artery should look like an artery in ts and vein similarly should look like a vein coming to the difference table from the book only directly page number 99 this table is another very very important table right and here the first is the definition which i have explained you 
that artery carries blood away from heart into an organ and vein carries blood away from an organ in the back to the heart right the uh, further difference is talking about structural differences arteries they pro they are progressively branched and they decrease in size whereas veins they are progressively uniting and increasing in size artery the smallest artery breaks into arterioles and the smallest vein arises from a venule right so here in this diagram i told you how the artery is breaking into an arteriole and how a vein is arising from a venule all right because the journey of blood is like here you can see this is the exchange of uh, gases that is taking place because they are very very thin wall right and how the blood is coming look at the arrows and then coming out from this vessel then arteries they have thick and more muscular walls as compared to veins which have thin and less muscular walls here arteries they have elastic walls whereas in veins they are non elastic the lumen is narrow you saw it here the lumen was narrow and here it is wide all right then no walls in arteries i have already told you walls are only present in the veins v for veins and v for walls arteries can constrict or dilate to control the flow of blood whereas veins they cannot constrict arteries are usually deeper placed whereas veins are more superficial nearer the skin arteries do not collapse when empty whereas veins they collapse when they are empty blood flows with jerks and under a great pressure in the arteries whereas blood flows continuously and under very little pressure in veins and the last difference arteries carry fully oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery here i told you all arteries they carry oxygenated or pure blood except pulmonary artery which carries impure blood or deoxygenated blood similarly all veins they carry deoxygenated blood right except pulmonary uh, art uh, except pulmonary vein which carries the pure or oxygenated blood remember children there are two things to understand suppose if i say oxygenated any time when we say oxygenated blood right it means either it is rich in oxygen or it is deficient in carbon dioxide then only it can become pure so remember whenever we say oxygenated means we are saying any of these things either it is rich in oxygen or we mean to say it is deficient in uh, carbon dioxide or in other ways it is pure similarly when we say deoxygenated d means without oxygen in other ways this is oxygen without oxygen means oxygen deficient or it is carbon dioxide rich or it is impure right so we don't have to get confused and not every time can we call it in all three ways we can only say the blood is oxygenated in very very simple words we mean to say that the blood is pure right or here it is impure or carrying more of carbon dioxide and less of oxygen so that's all for just now children the only topic i have explained you in this video is the blood vessels the definition the three types differences and how we really differentiate between them from one uh, in one or the other reasons here one homework i am giving you today is to write down the table of differences from page number 99 this is a very very important table so please write and see that you understand and learn it's almost a very important and sure question almost every year children that somehow or the other a question is framed from this table so learn it very clearly if it is a definition or whether it's a structural difference between them so that's all for just now children don't forget to do this homework in my next video i will start with the topic human heart so if possible please read the page number 94 and 95 for the next video to be given on human heart that's all for just now any questions please ask any time and the homework children is only one table to done to be done in your class for copies and two pages which i am going to send you in your copies to be written starting from here ending up over here 
that's all thank you